It's just like you've heard us say it. There's electricity running through this building and running through this room. And it would be silly of me to walk in this room with the light switch was off. And I walk in and go, man, I wish I had light. Fall, light, fall. Come on, light. Come on, light. And all I have to do is flick on the switch and the light comes on. I'm not sitting there going, I wish we had light in this room. I wish we had electricity. It's present. It's here. But it's up to us to acknowledge it and do what needs to be done to allow the light to come. Amen. So that's like the Holy Spirit. He's with us all the time. But that manifested presence, that is his glory. That's where he moves in. And if you allow him, he'll do things that he wants to do in each individual. It's so cool. And I believe he did it today. Amen. Well, thank you guys. I love that music. <laughs> I know you guys need to sit and receive. So thank you all. That was powerful. That song, man, I felt the fire, tangibly felt fire, shut up in my bones, that last song. And I knew I had to do something with it. So I followed him. Amen. Well, we're going to turn to some scriptures and then I'm just going to talk to you about uh, this wonderful day and things he's shown me and things I want you to know that I believe that we all need revelation on because I believe God wants us to have it. Um, you know, this is a, a day that, you know, I said a little bit uh, just a little while ago about what this day is, but it is called Pentecost, which means 50 and that means you count down 50 days from Passover. God said to do this, and you count down, uh, and then there was the Feast of Pentecost, or we could call it, they call it Shavuot, Shavuot, which means weeks. And this is all in God's calendar. You may not see it on your calendar. Maybe you will, but uh, we don't, something that we don't really know a lot about always uh, in America you, you know, we see Christmas, Easter, 4th of July, things like that. We know about those things. We know what to do on those days. Um, and those are great days, great times. But uh, God has times much like our holidays, but they're called feast or moads, set appointed times in God's calendar. And it's not something that, um, I'll just set this straight right here. You, some of you heard me say it. It's not a Jewish thing. Everybody say amen. Say, okay, I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. Um, it's true. It's not a Jewish thing. Uh, the Bible says these are the feasts of the Lord. Well, is he our Lord? He's our Lord, isn't he? And for my people, are we his people? We're his people. So we need to know something about these set appointed times, appointment times with God. He said seven in a year that he said, these are my appointment times and you come and meet with me and I meet with you. Well, I think we need to know about that. That's pretty important. Um, so we're going to dig in here a little bit, but like I said earlier, this is uh, much of what he was showing me is that this is a love story and it's God's love story for you, for me, uh, from him to us. And it's, it's about, it's really called, the rabbis call it, this is a uh, day, is a, is a wedding day. This is our wedding day. You might go, what? This is when they went, and we see the little pictures and the fires on them like a little bit lighter, and they were in the upper room, and they were praying, and the Holy Ghost came, and they all spoke with other tongues and all these different languages, and everybody understood them. Pastor Dana, are you sure you're getting the right one? Come on. No, it is. It is a wedding day. They call it the day they married God. Wow. Now, I know, girls, you can kind of relate to this a little bit. Guys are like, what? I married God. <laughs> I'm a boy. <laughs> but this is the way it is. We are the bride. As the body of Christ as a whole, we're called the bride. Right? Come on, you can talk back to me. Yeah, we're the bride. We're the bride of Christ. Now, I, did anybody this week... Uh, uh, look at or watch any clips or see anything about the royal wedding this week? Anyone? Come on. Come on, y'all. <laughs> okay, did anybody watch uh, after the wedding? Like, there's all this preliminary counting down up to. Did anybody watch clips of the wedding, parts of the wedding? Okay, did anybody get up at 6 in the morning with me and watch the royal wedding? Why? Come on, girls. Yes, come on. This was cool, guys. This was, uh, y'all should have watched it. Shame on you. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, this was, I mean, we had American princess here. We had American coming and she was going to marry, or she did marry Prince Harry of Britain, and this was pretty exciting. So I kind of, uh, with all the Mother's Day and things going on, I kind of had forgotten when it was and saw, saw that it was this weekend and last weekend. I went, oh my goodness. I have to catch up. Like every day, I'm going to try to watch something. I was on BBC. I'm re DVRing all this stuff. My husband going, what is all this British stuff DVR'd on our DVR? Can I erase this? I'm like, no, 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 no. You can't erase this. No, no, no. This is important. I got to catch up. I got to find out when they met. I got to see all the history of all the other weddings and how they do the things and how they pick the dress and how they do everything. I'm really into it. You can tell. So I kind of got a late start. So uh, during the week, I'm trying to catch up. But then I begin to, I'm not even getting married here. I am counting the days of when this day is, and I'm trying to find out things about it because I'm getting excited. There's an expectation about this royal wedding. Come on, we got an American. Come on, this is cool. So uh, I'm counting down the days. And so it comes, and I'm up at 6 in the morning. I even try to re recreate the cake they were making, and I have my hot tea. I know you guys are probably looking like, okay, you went a little overboard pastor Dana aren't you supposed to be studying for preaching on Sunday this is what my husband was saying exactly like uh can you kind of set this wedding stuff aside and work on the message for tomorrow he's getting a little concerned and so I am studying and studying and my mind keeps going towards this wedding and I go okay Holy Ghost help me get my mind off this wedding I know I got a little into it help me uh, forgive me for really getting into this and not paying attention to the message. And, and then I go on to study and study. And then all of a sudden this morning, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. And you would like to know my husband. <laughs> he goes, it's a wedding. It's all about a wedding. Praise the Lord. I was following you and I didn't even know it. So I begin, he downloads all of this stuff to me. So I'll share it. If you want me to share it with you, I'll share it with you. <laughs> so, uh, on this day, uh, the Jewish people read the book of Ruth. Now, in my mind, I'm going, you should be reading Exodus, right? Because how this started is uh, on Mount Sinai, the very first Shavuot or Pentecost, they counted down from the first Passover. Remember that we had Passover around Easter time, Passover, put the blood over the doorpost, death passed them by, they killed the lamb, all of that, and that comes up to the the current time of Jesus being the Passover lamb. So we talked a little bit about that. Well, after they come 50 days after Passover, they're out in the wilderness. The children of Israel came out of slavery. They're in the wilderness. And so they go to Mount Sinai and there they have a meeting with God, with their God. Pretty amazing stuff. He came down as fire, thunderings, lightning on the mountain. If you still look at the mountain today, that mountain, I saw a picture of it. It actually has, is burnt on the top. It's, it's like blackened on the top from where God came down. It's still there. At the foot of the mountain, and lack of time, I'm not going to go into this. We'll have to do it another time. Maybe we'll go into it a little Wednesday. Who knows? But um, there's uh, outlines of the shoes of the sandals because they took their shoes off at the foot of the mountain and because it was holy ground. And there's these rocks that have the outline still there of all their little sandals they took off all around the base of the mountain. This is for real, guys. This really happened. God came. He showed up. He gave him the statutes, the ordinances, the commandments, the law, whatever you want to call it. And they sat there in agreement and said, what you say, God, and what you give us, we will do. That's where we get the marriage covenant of, all right, I'll, I will, I do. It was funny because Prince Harry and um, Meghan, I, you're expecting him to say, I do. And he goes, I will. And they were snickering all across the crowd. <laughs> and then when it came her turn, I'm like, I'm like is she going to say, I do? Is she going to say, I will? If she says, I do, it's, he's going to look dumb. Oh, my goodness. All these little things that live you're watching and you're actually on the edge of your seat going, <gasps> wanting everything to go perfect. And so she said, I will. And so I, that was a part of it that was stood out to me. It was pretty funny. And uh uh, it was all kind of serious at the beginning, and they kind of laughed it, lightened it up a little bit. But this is where you get that, is that holy, it's called a holy marriage covenant, because God stood with his people, his bride, and said, 
here's what I need you to do. I need you to obey. It'll help. It'll keep you safe. It'll keep you in, uh, in line with me. It'll keep you uh, for the purpose I have for you. And they said, I, whatever you say, we will obey. I will do. And they actually, the rabbis call it the I do or the I will uh, covenant. That's what they call it, which is interesting because that's just like a marriage. It's where they got it from. They got it from God. So uh, then they stood there at the mountain, and there was an exchange. There was a covenant, and God keeps his promises, and there was a promise made. And uh, this was a holy time. And, I mean, they'd heard about God. They'd heard through Moses. They'd heard through uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They had told of their encounters with God. But this was the first time, guys, that the people of God, the Hebrew children, experienced, had an encounter with their God. First time. I mean, Moses, we know, saw the bush, and it was consuming, and he spoke. God spoke and said, I am of the I am. Take your shoes off. It's holy ground. All of that. That was Moses' encounter, but they'd only heard about Moses' encounter. They never had their own. This is the first time they met with God. So to me, I think they should be reading that. Why are they reading the book of Ruth? Well, this is, God has so many hidden mysteries in his word but they're all about Jesus, and they're all about you and me. It's so cool. In this one book, a living word, God calls it. It's the living word. That means you can look at it. I believe every time they read the book of Ruth, something else probably pops at them that they see they never saw before. So every, every year, for thousands of years, they're doing this now. Jesus did this. He went, even as a young boy and growing up, he would read, go through all the things they would do, and he'd read the book of Ruth. And this was his story, and this is our story. It's a love story. It's a wedding story. So in the book of Ruth, it's about a young girl that was a Gentile. That means she was not a Jew. She married into this family. Her husband died, and she's out gleaning She's picking up the, what's left of the harvest, and she meets Boaz. Boaz is a Jew, a wealthy Jew. And he pays all her debts off, and he marries her. Even though she's a Gentile, he marries her, and she comes into the family, and the two become one. This is a lot about, this is about Pentecost. This is still about you and me, remember? So even in the things that they do every year at this time, they're probably doing it sometime between, it started last night, sundown, it'll eat, in Pentecostal in sundown Monday night. They take these two loaves of bread, and they take, first they take the loaves of bread and they wave them, and they worship with their loaves of bread. And you're like, that is crazy. We just came from Passover when it couldn't have any leaven in it, and it had to be flat, and they had to tear it and hide it and did all the stuff with unleavened matzah bread. But now they got these big, look like yummy French bread rolls that they're waving. I don't get it. They're waving. I mean, wouldn't you think it's a little strange if someone came in here and we all have loaves of bread and we're waving them? They're probably like, I'm at the wrong church. I'm out of here, you know. But actually, the first church did this every year. And that's a whole nother story. But it was man's tradition that got it out of the church. That's why we need to talk about it and remember it. No, I did not bring, you don't have bread under your seat to wave, but that would have been a good idea. <laughs> so they're waving the bread. And then they, two people come up, and it's the rabbis, and they hold the bread. One on either side, a big loaf, long baguette kind of bread. And they're holding it, and you go, that's strange. What in the world? And leaven, that stands for like sinful. What? Pastor Paul was talking about it a little bit earlier. Well, they hold it up, and then they actually cross it together, and the two become one. Book of Ruth. But it stands, one loaf stands for the Jews, the Jewish God's people. The other loaf stands for the Gentiles. And they come in, and the two become one. That's the story of the church. That's the story of redemption. Book of Ruth, I encourage you to read it, is the story of redemption. Someone who didn't deserve it, wasn't in the family, but because he, she was chosen, and he chose her, and she chose him, 
the two became one. And God made that happen. Pretty amazing. That's how we came into the family because of Jesus. Now they hold these two loaves up on either side and there's a gap in between. And they pick up a lamb and they bring it and they bring it in the middle of the two loaves and the lamb comes between to show that there's a it bridged the gap. The lamb that was slain bridged the gap between the Jew and the Gentile. Pretty awesome. Then they put it down, they continue to bring a goat and all this other stuff. Because every sacrifice, every sacrifice that could ever be made bridged the gap. Jesus was every sacrifice that could ever be made to bridge the gap between Jew and Gentile. To bring us into the kingdom of God with him, even though we didn't even deserve it. Is that amazing? That's what this day is all about. So I'm looking at all this, and, and as I was watching this wedding, he's bringing all these thoughts I had that came back to me. And I'm sitting there looking at this girl, this American girl. Now she is an actress, so she has some fame, but she's just, as they would say, a commoner. She has no royal blood. He chose her. She chose him. And I looked, and there was this moment where, and, and, you know, I'm such a girl, so, you know, bear with me, guys. But, you know, it was such a moment when they got in that carriage. I'm like, oh, I mean, I just felt a flutter in my heart. Like, they're in a carriage and these white horses and, and all the soldiers. And, oh, man, it's just amazing. And as they're pulling away, I could hear the vows they were saying. So whatever's mine is yours. Whatever yours is mine which came from God in the first place, this holy covenant. And as she's pulling away, they go past that big castle, and they're going under the little um, tunnel thing. And I'm thinking, all of this is hers. Oh, man, it was like a real-life Hallmark, Hallmark movie without the cheese. This was the real deal. But I thought, all of this is hers, and she did nothing to earn it or deserve it and she is not royal blood and now she has a title and I just kept thinking about that you're a duchess now but you yesterday you're an actress from America but now today you're a duchess and nothing that you earned you weren't born into this family and we are like that guys we did nothing to deserve it But because of the love of God and his plan of redemption, because of Jesus, we were brought into the family, and now we're royalty. I mean, now she's got to carry herself different. And you know what I thought, too? This is another thing. God is so good. They were saying, oh, after, you know, this is glorious and beautiful and, you know, her dress and what a lovely day and, and eating the luncheon and everything they do and the party and but then they said, okay, right after the honeymoon, they hit the ground running. And I just came over me like, whew, Megan, are you sure you're ready for this? Because <laughs> I watched some of the preliminaries, whatever, during the week of things that, that, that uh, Kate does and all this. And I mean, they're traveling, they're moving, they're appearing, they're helping people, they're, they're having meetings and talks. And it's all the time. And you might think, well, who cares? She's a princess. Well, this is, she signed up for this and there's things that go with it. She's not going to be a princess sitting on a big bed with her beautiful dress eating bonbons all day and drinking tea. This is not, she knew, I'm sure she fully knows what she signed up for. This is going to be work and it's going to be work for people. So when we sign up for this, we can be ones that say, good, I'm royalty now. I'm going to leave it right there, but I'm going to go sit on my, my, my chair and eat my bonbons. And I just want, give me prosperity now. Give me healing now. Give me everything I need for me. And then that's all I need, God. This is for me, right? It's just for me, right? The Holy Ghost was sent for power from on high to, to, to uh, be inside of me, overflowing, infilling for me, right? So everybody can say, she has the big house over there. She's a Christian, right? Sure wish I could be like her. No, we can have all that. He wants us to have all that. Just like Megan, she's going to have all that. But there's things that come with it. 
She's going to have to work. Now, we do not want to hear that as Christians. I know, I know that is a dirty word. Pastor Dana, I can't believe you even said that. How could you say that? We're just talking about the fire on the day of Pentecost. Jesus promised them the promise would come. It's so glorious. And they receive power. And we can live our lives better, right? Well, right. But there's more that comes with it. We got to choose. He's not going to force it on us. I mean, we can look at Megan. She could get into this a couple weeks and go, no, I don't want to do this. And she could get out of it. There's been divorces, Princess Diana, Prince Charles. She could get out of it. But I'm sure she fully knew this is what I signed up for, and there's going to be things that come with this. And it will be, there has to be something in her, I believe, that's for people. Because this is not all about her being a princess. So it's not all about you being a prince or a princess, guys. This is for people. So we receive that power to be witnesses. And I thought, man, I hear that, but I need something to kind of help me. It was basically, uh, I was looking up things to help me understand that more, and you understand that more. We receive power from on high. We receive power when we ask Jesus in our heart, and we ask the Holy Ghost to fill us up. We receive power so we can go out and tell about it, and tell about the goodness that happened to us, and tell everyone around us. I mean, that day the church was birthed. This was always in God's plan. When they were at Mount Sinai and sitting at the bottom of the mountain saying, whatever you say, we'll obey, we'll do, I will, I do. When they said that, he was already seeing the day of Pentecost. When Jesus told 120, go and, go and, go and wait because the promise is coming. I know you don't want me to go, but let me tell you it's going to be better because I can't be with you all the time. But there's going to be one that's anointed. He is the anointed one. He's the helper. He's the one. He's the power. He, he's the one that will be inside of you. I mean, let me tell you, he is bigger than nuclear. He's going to be that kind of power on the inside of you. So you can go out and tell other people and get more people into this kingdom. It's time to be about it. Now, now you're a prince. Now you're crowned a prince. Now you're crowned a princess. Now it's time to be about it. Get to work now. So they went and they had to obey because if they didn't go and wait, they wouldn't have received it. So whoever went ended up to be 120. We don't know. Maybe some, a lot fell off and didn't make it there. But the ones that obeyed, the power came. Yeah, Jesus left on the 40th day of the counting down. Remember the expectation to the next feast? The only one God said, count it down every day. Count the om Omar. It was the, the grain. Count it down. It has to do with harvest, too, by the way. This is a harvest feast. So much in these feasts, guys. We could spend probably six weeks and not even touch, scratch the surface. But I'm just giving you what he wants to give you today. You can go and research it on your own. I encourage you to do so because this is, this is about you. So they counted down the days. Jesus left, and there was ten more days. He's like, in ten days... Go wait, and in 10 days, be there, be ready. The promise is coming. What he promised years ago, what they had been waiting and acting out, that book of Ruth, the promise, the seal of redemption. So they did, and he came like a rushing mighty wind, fire set upon them, fire. Just like on that mountain, just like what Moses saw, the pillar of fire they followed, that fire came. Just like I was saying earlier, that fire was burning on the inside of me, and I couldn't hardly contain it. And it, it, it is. The Bible says it's like fire shut up in your bones. When you're filled with him, when you're connected to, to the Holy Spirit, and you're connected to God, you have a relationship, you've got this word in your heart, you're reading it, you're living it you are hearing and you're obeying, then it's like fire shut up in your bones. And on that day, they went and they began to speak in other tongues. They been, began to speak in all the language. And on that day, everyone was gathered. It was the day of Pentecost. So they said from every nation, you can look it up. I have it in here, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to roll through it. You'll have to look that up in, in Acts. And it says that it talks about all the nations that were there represented and it said every nation someone from every nation heard them speak in their own language that's a sign and a wonder you know 
If all of us in here spoke different languages and I'm up here speaking and I'm speaking English, you would be like, I don't know what she's saying. But then I'm speaking and I can speak in all of y'all's language. That would be pretty cool. And you hear exactly. And what they're doing is proclaiming the redemption, proclaiming what Jesus did. And told. And then Peter got up and preached the very first camp meeting there ever was. He got up and preached. And I mean, what a good result. 3,000 came into the kingdom in one day. In a day. 3,000. And then those went out and were witnesses. And Jesus told this promise is coming. And you're going to be witness to, to Judea, to Samaria, and in the uttermost parts of the earth. You know what that means? Everywhere. Jesus was saying they didn't understand everywhere. They didn't know America. They didn't know England. They didn't go know uh, Europe yet or all of that. They the uttermost parts of the earth. That time, they didn't even know if it was round or flat or whatever. <laughs> they didn't know, but he, Jesus said, you'll go everywhere. But it starts today. It started that day. The fire. The Holy Spirit. The power. They had to have power to go out and witness. Because why? Because uh, the, the Holy Spirit is the one who works through you. If they were just doing it on their own, it would just be out of their own uh, man's work or, or out of their own just man's ability, which is way too low. And it's not enough to get people into a kingdom, to get them out of darkness and pulled over into the kingdom of light. We needed some dunamis, the Bible called it, power. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. That's the kind of power they needed. And that's what they got. A download, guys. We can understand that a little bit more. A download of the power of God. How many of you are like, if I can have a download today of the power of God to do what I need to do and get through the week, that'd be great. But it wasn't just for that. And that's great. And God wants that for you. But it was for other people. It was, came at a time they call Feast of Harvest, and it was all about harvest. I'm like, well, I thought you said it was all about a wedding. It is. Be fruitful be, and multiply. <laughs> you had to come into covenant first and obey what God says, and then you go out. And you have the ability of God on the inside to do what he's called you to do. He does everything like Pastor Paul and I always say. He does everything for purpose, on purpose, and for purpose. This was not something he just cooked up like, that'd be good. It's for a purpose, and it's the purpose for you and other people in this, in this dying world of people that are lost and they need Jesus. They're in darkness. And they also call this day the day they got born again. Isn't that cool? And on this day, they only eat or drink dairy products. At first I went, what? Where's all the Hanukkah food where they're making donuts in the oil? I like that. <laughs> that was better food. What are we just having dairy? Which I'm thinking, oh, I could kind of, yeah, hmm, cream my coffee and cheeses, but what's that about? And then I was looking a little deeper. It's because they believe that's the day they born again. They were born again, and when you're born again, uh, it's like a baby. Babies only can drink milk. So then they take the milk, the dairy, and they make, they have everything. They only eat dairy products today. That's so cool. Isn't that neat? The day they got born again, Jew and Gentile, remember, coming in together, the day the redemption was sealed by the Holy Ghost. This was the birth of the church. I mean, pretty amazing. So uh, we need to, God sets this up so we can remember it. And it's something that he wants us and says, remember these things. And not just for the Jews, for us. Everybody say me. me. We need to remember. And the why, why we behind why we need to remember is so that we can go out and be witnesses like they were. Do you know you're still writing the book of Acts? We could be in like chapter a million, whatever, verse two or something like that. Seriously, that, the, the acts of the apostles, that was just the acts of the sent ones, the acts of God's people that were born again. And that's you and me. 
We don't have to be fivefold ministry gift preachers or, or teachers or evangelists or whatever to be able to do this. You can be talking to your neighbor. You can be talking to somebody at work. You, can, you need to, I just ask you to ask God to show you someone that you could reach. Maybe the next month or so, show me someone. It might be someone that just gets on your last nerve at work and you're like man I really don't want to pray for them because anybody been there like I don't really feel like praying for them get them God get them <laughs> but <laughs> I have to tell my kids this and then I got to choose to do it too I'm like okay remember they don't know remember they don't you know you got to think about people are sitting in darkness and if they are born again and you need to witness to them in love um it's not just about, we, we can help all people. But sometimes, it, it, uh, if you see that, you just know they don't know how much God loves them and they don't know the word. They don't know who wrote the word. They don't know God. And they don't know truly know him if they're acting the way they're acting or doing whatever they're doing. But they're not born again. Ask God to give you an entrance in. And I'm telling you, he's did it for me. He'll do it. You just got to choose to you know, walk in love, forgive him. <laughs> if they're ones you don't really like. But he will give you, that love of God can get through anything. And, and, and you got to change your heart. I don't care if they did terrible, it was really wrong what they did or they don't like you. You know, it doesn't matter. Ask God to give you an entrance. Forgive them. Give, him, give me an entrance into their life. Just maybe conversation or show me what I need to say. It may start with, you just need to go encourage them today. You just need to go give them a hug or go say hi to them today or, you know, buy them a coffee, whatever. And you might go, man, I don't want to do that. It may start with planting little seeds like that. And then they become open. And then you can get in there, be a witness, be one that tells what Jesus has done. This plan, this great plan of redemption for you and I is not just for you and me. It's for others too. So as we become this, uh, we become a prince or a princess, then we have became prince and princesses, nothing that we deserved. We take on the cost. We take on some work we need to do because now we have the privilege of carrying around the very presence of God, the very wisdom of God, the very love of God, all the fruits of the Spirit on the inside of you. And you carry that. And when you carry that, you don't keep it to yourself. And maybe you have, and you're like, I just don't feel comfortable. And I've just really kept it to myself because I'm afraid, or I don't know, I think they'll think I'm weird. Or, and I'm not asking anybody to be weird. Because the Holy Ghost leads. He doesn't push you. He doesn't drive you. But you know what? He loves that, those people, that person, those people, your family. He loves them, and he can show you the exact way to get in there. You get in there with the Holy Spirit. I mean, you've got all the apps on the inside of you guys <laughs> to do whatever God has you to do. And it might be, I, I need to be the best whatever in my occupation. God, that's what God's called me to, and I need to be the best. And He and expect him to help you because he'll help you. You might be like, I believe I'm supposed to be in ministry. Or I believe I'm just supposed to be an encourager to people and, and my family. Whatever God puts on your heart and he's shown you to do, do it with the best of your ability and trust the Holy Spirit, that power on the inside, to work out of you. It's never just you having to do it. You have, you walk as royalty now. Remember Pastor Paul was saying how we left slavery behind and we came into, don't be like the Egyptian, I mean, the people that were in Egypt and they couldn't get Egypt out of them, but they were out of Egypt, the children of Israel. Don't be like that. Be like, I'm coming out, but I'm leaving all that slavery mentality behind. Like, Megan Markle's got to do that. She's got to leave all her way of doing things behind. She got. I can't do that that way anymore. I got to come into this, and there's certain things I need to do. I got to carry myself different. I have duties now that I got to do to help people. That's what we have to to do. And uh, it's a privilege, it's an honor, but it's a great responsibility. We are the church. This love story 
is a love story about you and God. It's a wedding between you and God. And there's coming another wedding soon that we will really have a wedding with God where we'll be with him. And like Pastor Paul said, we want to say, well, you're done. We want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. You want to have this intimacy with God and this time with God like like you would a spouse. You wouldn't get married. They're not going to get married, the prince and, and, and Megan, and then that's it. They just go their separate ways. No, they become to grow in a marriage and a relationship of how to be married together, and there's intimacy. Well, there's intimacy with you and God. You don't get saved and go, okay, I'm good. I'm, I got fire insurance. I'm getting into heaven. Praise the Lord. I'm going to leave it right there. No, it's because of that love story that you're even in his kingdom. You even brought into the family in relationship with him. Now you cultivate that on a daily basis. Just like I was doing. I'm just being like, okay, Lord, you're helping me. Okay, and get up this morning. I'm just going to talk to you. I'm just going to spend time with you because I never want to get into I'm studying, I'm studying, I'm studying, and not really get it for myself because I don't really get it for myself and what he's speaking in me. There's no way I can go give it out to you guys. There's no, it's the same with you. You can't go rattle, don't do that, don't, don't do this. Go to your work or your family and rattle off scriptures that mean nothing to you. You know what? There's no Holy Ghost power behind it. Well, what's the word, Pastor Daniel? What are you talking about? You always speak the word. It's got power. Not if the power in you and the revelation isn't behind it, the one speaking it. It will just be like dead words going out there. You've got to understand it and experience, just like Ephesians says, Paul says in Ephesians, experience the love for yourself. So I encourage you today, experience the love for yourself. Spend time. I had to do that this morning. I'm just spending time with you. I just love you. I love this. I love this set time. I love your ways, Lord. I love the details and the hidden mysteries you place in the word and in and, and, and the whole essence of time. How these intricate parts of you, God, are coming out. And I'm so thankful I get to see it. And I get to know about it. And you show me things. And I'm so thankful, Holy Spirit, you live on the inside of me to lead and guide me every day. And even as I'm supposed to minister, you're leading and guiding me. I was back in the office a second ago going, Holy Ghost, I trust you. Holy Ghost, I trust you. Because I always want to keep the balance and keep it lined up where it's just not, ooh, I got this new revelation. I'm going to go as Pastor Dana and give it. No, 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 no. Holy Ghost, you gave me this. You're the light. You're the revealer. You're the revelator. What do you have? I've got all this stuff and information. I got notes and notes I didn't even give you. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, this is so good, and all the facts and all the stuff. And I, I had to lay it all down and go, what do you want to say to the people who are coming today? What do you want to speak and write on the hearts of the people today? What do they need from you today? Because here I am, a willing vessel. That's what it's all about. You coming in, man, and getting to flow out like you want to. And so we all have to do that every day, all the time, raising your kids, being a spouse, working. you got to go, I lay down what I think. I lay down how I think. I lay down having control. Don't we always got to lay down control? Come on. Okay, moms, come on. We got, you know, you got to get where you got to keep control with your children and you can get over where you're trying to control your husband and trying to, okay, wait, wait, I got to step back. I'm not going to control. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to, Holy Ghost, tell me. <laughs> and, and we all have to do this and, and we got to check ourselves. And you know who will help you? The Holy Spirit that was given on that day, the promise. You are married to the Lord. Isn't that awesome? And so there's times I go to my husband and he, he, certain things he knows a lot about, especially the word and stuff. And I'll go, what do you think about this? What do you know? Can you help me with this? Or definitely working out. Can you help me? Am I doing this right? Is my form right when I'm doing this squat? And he'll be like, no, go lower. You got to do it all over again. He's always do that with squats. If you don't go low enough, you just got to do a whole rep again. I'm like, oh, dear Lord, help me. Why did I didn't even ask you? <laughs> He's the toughest trainer, is he, Aaron, Buzzy? 
Tough trying to see. Not the only one. But there's things he knows about that I can go, and there's things I know about that he can come and ask me, and I'll tell him because we're married. And you've got the one who is all wisdom on the inside of you to help you in your own specific individual life. Like he cares about your life. He cares about things going on with you. The Bible talks about he's concerned about what you're concerned about. I'm not talking about worried. I'm talking about things that you're watching over and things that need to come in line with his word and the way he wants it. He's concerned about that. He's looking over those things too. That is wonderful. Because sometimes, you know, even in your, your spouse, you'll be like, I'm trying to tell you this, and this means a lot to me. And they're like, what? Yeah, whatever. They're doing whatever they're doing, and, and they're not really paying attention. And you want them to pay attention to this little small thing, but it's important to you, like the royal wedding. And I need to make a cake, and you need to help me. <laughs> and he's going, what? You're doing what? You're getting up 6 a.m. for What? But, but God is not like that. He did care. He did help me out, so I can't, can't bash him too much. He helped me get some ingredients, so I'm not saying a word. He, he was a delight and a blessing to me. But, you know, they don't, always think, they don't always think about everything that you think is important, and you think, like, he's like, look at this cool workout, and I did this. I'm like, that is so boring. Like, yes, babe, that, oh, man, yeah, that's awesome. The weights were what again? You bench what? Okay, yeah. Woo, that's, that's amazing. So <laughs> you have to make yourself and you have to, you know. But God cares about everything that you, uh, uh, everything about you. He, he loves. He's interested in. I mean, he did this whole thing for you. All this. The plan of redemption. All these details. All these counting down every day. You think we're expecting? You think the Jewish people and, and the people after Jesus told the disciples, they were expecting and counting down the days? God was expecting and counting down the days. All of heaven was counting down the days until that spirit, the spirit of the living God, could come into earth and fill a people. That was always God's design. It was always his plan. It was his plan from the beginning. So we don't take what's so precious and so wonderful and powerful and just let it sit. We got we to gotta do, guys. We got to do. We got to be reaching people. We got to be getting this thing wrapped up. You know why? So we can get out of here. Because all of the nations, all the, the peoples, they need to be able to hear. And we need to have this harvest come in. And one thing that, that they did even on Mount Sinai, God told Moses, go tell the people to prepare themselves. Take three days, prepare themselves before they come to the foot of the mountain. They had to get things right. They had to get prepared. Much like we talked about this wedding. So much preparation for that wedding. In just one hour time, that part was over. Much preparation for even that one hour. Expectation, counting down. We need to be like this every day. We're counting down. We're expecting God to move in our lives. We're looking around for people we need to reach out to. We carry ourselves as royalty now, as carriers of the very presence of God. Listening, spending time, connecting to God. What do you have me to do? What do you have me say today? How many people could he have reached through us if we had only listened? And not we get in condemnation, just pick it up today. Say, I'm going to do it, Lord. I'm going to listen. I'm going to be more sensitive. I'm going to spend time with you because people, people's lives are depending on it. There's people in darkness that need to come into the light because the end is coming and Jesus is coming again and we want to bring as many people as we can with us into this family that's the whole plan man he loves you man he loves me but he sure loves them too and he loves you enough to entrust you with the power of God in you to go out and be a blessing and a witness and tell him what he's done for you amen well I just want to encourage you today your royalty you're married to God today. Expect him to move. Expect to hear his voice. And say, be ones that will say, that which you tell me to do, that's that which I hear from you, Father. 
I will do. I will obey. I will. I do today. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, Pastor Paul. That was a good word, amen. That was good. You know, <clears throat> the purpose of Pentecost was so we could be witnesses. It wasn't so we could just, you know, like she was saying, not so we could just have a bless me club and, and nobody else around, but, but so we could truly be witnesses, so we could be endued with power and go out and do mighty exploits for him. If you look all through the book of Acts, I would highly encourage every one of you to read that book this week, the book of Acts. You'll see time and time again, they got filled up, they went out, preached Jesus, came back together, got filled up, preached Jesus, came back together, got filled up, preach Jesus. See, the church doesn't exist within these four walls. The church exert, exists out there. That's where it is. That's where it is. And so, um, with every head bowed, with every eye closed, I just want you to ask yourself this question. Am I walking in the fullness of God in my life? Do I? Am I walking in that power? Is Jesus really Lord of my life? Is he the first and foremost thing that I think of? Or have I allowed him to, to get put on the back burner? Have I put him second or third or fourth? Putting my marriage first or my job first or whatever it is, my ministry first and him second I'm talking to everybody I'm talking to myself and so if you would say you know what I, I need to come back I need to live that life with Jesus first in my life or you've never even prayed that prayer before asking Jesus to come into your heart so you can live a life like he intended for you to live if that's you in any of those invitations, I would like to raise your hand right now because we're going to pray with you. I see that hand. I see those hands. I see those hands. Thank you. I see those hands. I see those hands. Just keep those hands up right now. I don't want everybody. We don't do life alone here. Life's not meant to be done alone. We do life together. And so I want everyone to pray this prayer together. Father God, I want you to say it with all your heart. Father God, I repent of anything that would separate me from you, from putting anything in front of you. Jesus, I put you first in my life. Jesus, be Lord of my life. Make all things new. And I thank you that from this moment forward, I'll never be the same again. I've been changed. I've been transformed. I've been made a new creation. Never to be the same again. Never to go back to that old way of thinking, that old way of doing but living that new life from this day forward. And I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name right now.